Good morning, dear students. My name is Farhan Mazar, and the subject today we are studying is Cambridge O Levels Physics 5054. In this video, we are we will talk about the contents uh, for the space physics which have been added into the syllabus of the Cambridge O Levels Physics 5054. And from the examination starting from 2023, uh, the space physics will be tested in those exams, the concepts related with the space physics. So in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about two things. One, the changes uh, to the marks of the papers. And there are there is a slight diff, uh, change in the theory paper. Now the theory paper will be of 80 marks and it is of one hour and 45 minutes. And the paper four, we do not take paper three of the physics. We take paper four in Pakistan and we call it the ATP paper. That paper will previously it was of 30 marks. Now it will be of 40 marks. And the time uh, for the paper will be one hour. The duration of the paper will be one hour. And the MCQ paper is still the same. There will be 40 marks. One hour will be allowed. 40 MCQ questions will be there. So in this video, the next uh, most important thing which I want to do is to talk about the contents of the space physics, the topics which you have to prepare and let's start, let's watch this docu uh, document, which the Cambridge has issued, and we will see one by one that what are the contents for the space physics, which we have to prepare for the exam. So the the document which I have opened in front of you, that is Cambridge O-Level Physics 5054, syllabus, syllabus for 2023, 2024, and 2025. And right now I am on the su subject content and it's uh, sixth uh, topic and that is about the space physics. And in the space physics, these are the contents which the Cambridge actually wants you to learn and they will make exams on these points. So the first topic is Earth and the solar system. So the, the 6.1.1 topic, the Earth, you should know that the Earth is a planet and orbits the sun once in approximately 365 days. The orbit of the Earth around the Sun is an ellipse, which is approximately circular. The Earth rotates on its axis, which is tilted once in approximately 24 hours. It takes approximately one month for the Moon to orbit the Earth. It takes approximately three, 500 seconds for light from the Sun to reach the Earth. The second is define the average orbital speed from the equation V is equals to 2 pi r divided by T, where r is the average radius of the orbit and the capital T is the orbital period. Recall and use this equation. Next topic is 6.1.2, the solar uh, system. And in the solar system, they want, uh, the first thing is, Describe the solar system as containing one star, the sun, the eight named planets, and know their order from the sun. Minor planets that orbit the sun, including dwarf planets such as Pluto and asteroids in the asteroid belt. Moons that orbit the planets. Smaller solar system bodies, including comets, and natural satellites. Analyze and interpret planetary data about orbital distance, orbital period, density, surface temperature, and uniform gravitational field strength at the planet's surface. The third one is know that the strength of the gravitational field 
at the surface of a planet depends on the mass of the planet. Around a planet decreases as the distance from the planet increases, means the gravitational field around a planet decreases as the distance from the planet increases. Know that the sun contains most of the mass of the solar system and that the strength of the gravitational 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 field at the surface of the sun is greater than the strength of the gravitational field at the surface of the planets. Know that the force that keeps an object in orbit around the sun is the gravitational attraction of the sun. Know that the strength of the sun's gravitational field decreases and that the orbital speeds of the planets decreases as the distance from the sun increases. Topic 6.2 is stars and the universe, the sun as a star. Know that the sun is a star of medium size, consisting mostly of hydrogen and helium, and that it radiates most of its energy in the infrared, visible and ultraviolet regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. Know that stars are powered by nuclear reactions that release energy and that in stable stars, the nuclear reactions involve the fusion of hydrogen into helium. 6.2.2 is about the stars and The first topic is state that galaxies are each made up of many billions of stars. The sun is a star in the galaxy known as the Milky Way. Other stars that made up the Milky Way are much further away from the Earth than the sun is from the Earth. Astronomical distances can be measured in light years, where one light year is the distance traveled in a vacuum by light in one year. Describe the life cycle of a star. That's the second topic here. A star is formed from interstellar clouds of gas and dust that contains hydrogen. A protostar is an interstellar cloud collapsing and increasing uh, and increasing in temperature as a result of its internal gravitational attraction. A protostar becomes a stable star when the inward force of gravitational attraction is balanced by outward force due to the high temperature in the center of the star. All stars eventually run out, run out of hydrogen as fuel for the nuclear reaction. Most stars expand to form red giants and more massive stars extend, expand to form red super giants when most of the hydrogen in the center of the star has been converted to helium. A red giant from a less massive star forms a planetary nebula with a white dwarf at its center. A red supergiant explodes as a supernova, forming a nebula containing hydrogen and new heavier elements, leaving behind a neutron star or a black hole at its center. The nebula from a supernova may form new stars with orbiting planets. Then we have the topic 6.2.3, and the name is uh, the universe. First topic is know that the Milky Way is one of the many billions of galaxies making up the universe, and that the diameter of the Milky Way is approximately 100,000 light years. Describe the redshift as an increase in the observed wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation emitted from residing stars and galaxies. Know that the light from distant galaxies shows redshift and that the further away the galaxy, the greater the observed redshift and the faster the galaxies speed away from the Earth. Describe qualitatively 
how redshift provides evidence for the big bang theory so these are the uh, these are the contents subject contents and especially the contents for the space physics which the cambridge want you to learn and i have made videos uh, from two different books on this topic and i hope that uh, those videos will help you to master these concepts and we will god willing we will work also on the exam questions we will obviously take these exam questions from other uh, exam bodies and because this is first time being introduced to the cambridge o levels physics so we will take exams from like igcse from uh, adexcel and we, i will make some videos on them about the questions which are related to the space physics and we will help you to master this concept so keep watching my videos and also keep watching videos uh, from the youtube and about the solar system about the universe the milky way the planets their moons that will help you to understand this concept that will help you to comprehend this concept so thank you very much everyone have a good day god bless you all